guys, I'm Bethany. And I'm Dalton. And this is Looking for the Middle. Am I supposed to say something else here? I can't remember. A Christian modern something something something. Welcome, guys. We know what we're talking about, and you should listen to us. I nailed that. <laughs> a modern He's Christian's like, guide Christian to dating. Christian dating, modern, I don't know. Not just all the buzzwords. <laughs> yeah. Who is calling me? Potential spam. Potential spam is like one of my best friends these days. Spam sounds like ham, and I'm really They hungry. call me all the time. Anyway, we're glad you're here, guys. We are going to have a really fun episode today, I think. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Dalton's not looking forward to it as much as I am, I don't think. There's but, some hard questions in Yeah, here. so I have created a top 10 list of basically the most popular questions we get from you guys. The ones we see a lot, the ones that obviously are on a lot of people's minds. This is what uh, you want to know about, and we thought... Ooh, we should revisit a lot of these and get a guy's perspective on them. So we're going to put Dalton in the hot seat a little bit today, which should be fun for everyone but him. It's my chair, though. So That's true. It is your chair. We're in your office. But ha. before we do that... Oh, this is the studio. Oh, yeah. We're in the studio. Yeah. Our studio here. But before we do that, let me remind you guys about a few things. Um, one. One. <laughs> uh, social media. If you don't follow us on social media, you should do that. Two. Newsletter. I'm Number throwing two. you off You are so totally bad. throwing me <laughs> off. <laughs> I'm like, I can't talk. Two is our newsletter. It comes out every Thursday after the episodes on Wednesday. You can go to our website, lookingforthemiddle.com, and sign up for that there. Three. Three is the Facebook group. Even though it's still social media. I know, but it's a separate thing. If you're not in our Facebook group, ladies, uh, this one is for you. I uh, have created a Facebook group. It is um, LFTM Community. On Facebook, obviously. Um, and it's just a great place for you guys to be able to interact and kind of form some friendships and get to know each other. We um, we are doing a Bible study through Ephesians right now, a group of, a subset of that group. We're going through that. Um, we meet on Zoom and are able to chat and kind of, you know, dig into the Lord's Word and what He is teaching us there. So, I... We are recording this way ahead of time. I'm hoping by the time it actually comes out, I've talked Dalton into creating one of these for the guys, but we shall see. No promises. Nope. <laughs> I He's softening. He, he he was super against it first. Now he's like, yeah, we'll see if people want it. Are you ready for the question of the day so I can <laughs> get like, out I'm of that conversation? Gonna... <laughs> yes, go ahead. Okay. This is, I feel like this is going to be a really good one. Which TV show would best encapsulate your life? Oh, man. Because it's not what TV show do I like the most, which is The Office. Right. Which one would be and the best explanation of your life? And I can't say The Office because then I would be Pam working with all these crazy people, which is insulting to you. So I can't say that. Mm, I kind of accept the crazy part, but okay. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. You have stumped me. I know. It's a good Do question. Do you know what yours is? No, but I asked okay. you first. So I you know. have to figure it I out so I have time. Gonna, I was going to give you, let you answer. What TV show? Oh. You're struggling over I there. I am. I literally have nothing. This is gold. Um, okay, so there's like. If only you could see the terror on her face right now <laughs> as she realizes I have nothing to say. I really don't. Um. Okay, so here's here's one, and it, this is a stretch. But my life is pretty boring and run-of-the-mill. So the TV show that I'm thinking of is probably going to be like an old show, mm -hmm. like Leave it to Beaver, or I was, not even I Love Lucy because she is a <laughs> little crazy, a little more <laughs> a little more off the wall than I am. But like, yeah, Leave it to Beaver or something like that where it's just normal old family life except i am probably like beaver i'm the the kid who's always asking dumb questions <laughs> that was such a sad response there I, it was i said it was a stretch and that's the best i can do I, I have got all these ones that i wish it was but see i have a combination See, you I, didn't tell me the rules before we started that you could combine things that's the thing with life there are no rules here <laughs> come on now uh Mine is a combination of friends, but only the coffee shop scenes. Oh, okay. You have totally. Yes, I have. It's my question. I <sighs> yeah, can hijack it, it and do you whatever I want with it. This. Have you ever seen the show Meat Eater on Netflix? No. It's a hunting show. Oh, but the guy okay. just goes all over the place fishing and hunting and whatnot. I haven't yeah. done as much hunting, but I go fishing 
everywhere. <laughs> yeah. My whole life is uh, driving past a body of water and going, I bet I can catch a fish over there. So it's a combination of those two. Oh, okay. Fish and coffee. And for some reason, I also wanted to say Rocco's Modern Life. <laughs> I don't know why. It does not encapsulate my life at all, but I forgot that show oh, existed. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. So I'm boring and you like to fish. That's what we're getting from this? No, and coffee and shops coffee here. And coffee shops. But no, but like the coffee shop part is not just for the coffee. Oh, but like hanging out with friends and Hanging stuff. out with friends and absolutely ridiculous conversations okay guys we are gonna rein this in i don't know how much of that i actually cut out but y'all i sat here forever with a blank look on my face and was like i i i I don't know and the best i could come up with was leave it to beaver so we're gonna move on so now we are going to jump into the questions put you on the hot seat for a minute i'm sorry this question is what is worse during a kiss a sneeze or a cough (laughs) (laughs) a sneeze (laughs) Neither one of them are For good. For sure. Well, I mean, it depends on what kind of cough. Oh. Yeah, now <laughs> you're thinking it through. All right. Okay, I feel like it's okay. We don't, I'm not going to explain. We don't no, have no, to no, get no, way no. down the... Moving on down the road. This is great. This is all unscripted. We hadn't planned any of it, and it's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> Oh, my word. Okay, so let's just jump in. There's no segue. There is no coming back from that. We're just going to jump into your popular questions from Dalton's perspective. So, number one. It's going to be really hard to seriously answer some of these questions now. Well, just please try really hard. So, (sighs) number one, how do I, as a girl, let a guy know that I'm interested? What is the best way of doing that from a guy's perspective? Uh, I got asked this question forever ago on an Instagram post. Who asked uh, that? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I said bird calls in the middle of the sanctuary. I think that's probably the best way to do it. Like if you stand up in your pew or seat or whatever your church has and just stare at like direct eye contact, staring at them and making bird calls, that would go really well for you. Uh, so try it and let me know how it works. Okay. Or. Or. Let's go with the or. Or intentionality. Okay. So be intentional with, you, you make it pretty clear that, hey, I'm making serious effort to talk to you, uh, have conversations with you, hang out with you. Um, I think intentionality goes a long way in this because even though us guys are stupid, after a little while we can figure things out, at least a small percentage of it. And if someone is intentionally talking with me, approaching me often at church or when we're around friends, I can pick up a hint. Um, So I would say... There's that, but I'm also okay with, and this is going to go a little more into the second one, um, but I am also okay with say something. Like it's okay to voice your feelings and, and what you're thinking. It's not just come up to him and say, hey, you're you're a good man of God. Do you want to get married? Because that's going to freak him out. Um, As mostly, it should. <laughs> mostly guys do that to women, but it, it, I've heard it happen from time to time. Um, But I think it's okay to, if you know the person, somewhat okay to voice what you're feeling and what you're thinking. What do you think? Do you agree, disagree with what I said? I agree. I think, uh, I always summarize letting a guy know you're interested in, just be where he is. Be around him. Be, put yourself in his circles. Stalk him, got it. In a non-stalkery way. But I do, I do agree with you of like, okay, if you're interested in this guy and, you're feeling like it's mutual. One, you may not be as obvious as you think you are to where you're sitting like, oh my word, I'm making this so obvious. Why doesn't he just do something? Mm -hmm. So I think it's totally fine to just broach the subject. You don't have to full on ask him out if you don't want to, which I know we're going to get to in a second. So if you're not comfortable with that or you don't want to, I think it's fine to say, we actually talked about this in the Facebook group not long ago, something to the effect of, hey, I, I, we hang out a lot. We've been talking a lot. I've really enjoyed it. Um, it seems like that's kind of maybe, maybe a little more than friendship. I'm not sure. Um, so I'm just letting you know if that is what you're thinking, I'm I'm not opposed to it. I, I, whatever, just let him know, Hey, here's where I'm coming from. And then leave that up to him. Yeah. And I, if you'd rather, I I think open communication is going to go a long way for you in this scenario. Yeah. Like if you're coming up to a guy and, and just being honest about where you're at and what you're thinking and what you're feeling, mm-hmm. 
that's going to be so vastly different than what he's experienced probably the rest of the dating scene. Because yeah. a lot of times there's this ambiguity. Nobody knows what's going on. It's very confusing, especially from the guy's perspective of, is she interested? Is she not interested? She's really nice to me. I was, yeah. I was actually listening to a, a sports talk radio the other day, and the, the guys were joking years ago when they were uh, in high school. A girl was nice to him. He's like, I think I'm going to ask her out. And his friend goes, why are you going to ask her out? She was nice to me. Maybe she's just a nice person. So that's a lot of times how guys' brains are working. Like, does she like me? She was nice to me. Because sometimes females are not nice to us. Uh, So we really don't know how to approach that. So if you openly communicate it, you are saving so much confusion. Yeah. Um, So go for it. Do it in a healthy and careful way. And Yeah, and I think a key to that is not... (laughs) Not pressure, like in a low pressure way. Yeah. Don't add a lot of pressure, especially unnecessarily. So you're gonna to ask this, me out now? To, <laughs> yeah, you better be real confident of what he's thinking if you do that. So you do that to me, the immediate response you're gonna get is, uh. uh. <laughs> Let me think about it. Um, okay, so I'm gonna call an audible, and instead of going straight to number two, we're gonna flip two and three. With okay. Number three that we're going to put here is, okay, how do I tell if a guy is interested? Because I think there's two parts to this question. One, I've never really expressed an interest in him, but now I'm kind of wondering if he's interested in me. How do I tell? But then also on the heels of the question we just asked, okay, I've been showing interest. Like, how do I, how can I tell he is interested or maybe enlighten us on some other things guys will do to show they're not interested. So, you know, when to like, there's nothing cringier than girl or guy who is laying it on pretty thick with someone and you can tell they're trying to give them hints. Hey, I'm not interested. And they just keep going. Mm -hmm. So from a guy's perspective, what are things you do to show a girl you're interested? But then also what are things you do to show her you're not interested? Um, I I call guys complicated and yet simplistic at the same time. It's very confusing. (laughs) It is confusing. Uh, We are simple in the way that we approach things. At least I know for me, I am. But there's some complications mentally. Maybe complicated but straightforward yeah. is a better way of putting that. Yeah, I think I like that better. But the way that we think about things is often very complicated and we're overthinking things, overanalyzing things. The way we are in person, very straightforward, very simple in how we approach things. I, I think, is he making the same kind of effort to talk with you? Is he making the same kind of effort to make sure that if you're going out with friends, is he checking to see if you're going to be there? Hey, are you going tonight? Or are you you going to hang out with everyone when we go out to this bonfire? He's making an effort Mm -hmm. to see, are you going to be present at whatever function you're going to be at? Um, On the flip side of that, though, if, if he's not really communicating with you at group functions, if he's not communicating with you, um, hey, we're going to hang out and not making a concerted effort, that's one of those yellow flags that okay. you can sit there. Um, but I also, you can tell by the way that he interacts. Is he keeping a conversation going? So you're you're talking, you're asking him questions. He's answering them, but in such a way where it's not really opening up a back-end question for you. He's just answering yes or no questions. That's a good indication that there's not really anything there. He's just being polite. He's just being polite. Um, but there's also, uh, if you're in a group setting, a lot of these conversations are the way you really tell these things, in my opinion. If you're in a group setting, you're around a lot of people, and he's making no effort to really talk with you, or if you're jumping in the conversation, he answers really quickly and he turns to someone else and talks with someone else. These are all either red flags or yellow flags that are being waved saying, I'm not really that interested, <laughs> and you need to pick up on these okay. things. So here's a specific question within that okay. that I see a lot, not not necessarily people ask me, but I just see a lot in discussions of, okay, so I've been talking to this guy, like not necess- not in a we're talking, air quotes, but like we're friends, but not, we've been talking. And she's like, so I've been texting him, we've been talking more, um, but I I'm always the one texting first. I'm always the one reaching out. And he carries on a conversation, but I'm always the one having to start it. And so then it's like, and so here's what we do is we say, okay, well, I'm not going to text him. I'll just wait. And he doesn't text. 
And it's like, okay, so does that mean he's not interested or is he just waiting for me to text him? Because I always have. I don't know what to do. As the guy recipient of these texts, what is your thought process? Are you going to text the girl if you're interested if she doesn't text you? I don't think there's a one-size-fits-all answer okay. to this, unfortunately, because we're all unique and different. For me, if I'm interested, then I'm fine with initiating a conversation. Yeah. I probably will. Okay. But, there, I mean, there's other guys that they don't really like technology all that much. I know we're in a technology-driven society, but there's still guys my age that are out there they're not really interested in social media. Yeah. They don't really text a lot. They prefer in-person conversations, spending time with people. So I don't think there's a specific answer to that that would fit every single guy. But I would say if he's not starting any conversations, that's a cause for concern at least. Yeah. In, I mean, in my opinion, because you, know, you want him to reciprocate some sort of interest in making sure conversations are happening. Yeah. If it's one of those things where you say, okay, well, he's not really communicating. Let me put this to the test here. And a week or two goes by, and he doesn't really talk to you in person. He doesn't really talk to you over the phone. That's a pretty good indication, in my opinion. Agreed. Oh, yeah, I totally agree on that um, in, in person, too. There's not a there's not a one-size-fits-all to that, unfortunately. Yeah. Um. Let me throw one thing out there then to the guys that are listening. And this is not in a, you don't have to announce this to all of your friends who are girls who you text. But it, it, in a context of, hey, I'm getting to know this girl. We are talking. We are whatever. If you don't like texting and you don't like technology, you don't have to make a formal announcement of that. But it's really helpful for us as the girls to know, oh, he doesn't really like texting. So I'm not, one, I'm not going to make that a primary form of communication with him. But then two... I'll know if he doesn't reply for three hours that he just doesn't, he's busy, he doesn't get around to it. Not that, oh my word, he's ignoring me. Yeah. So as you're getting to know a girl in a dating context, this is not something that all of your friends have to know. But at, when you're in that getting to know a girl dating relationship, that is really helpful for information for us to have. Well, on the girl's side too, though, you can figure it out. There's a lot of context clues to figure that out. How, how quickly does he respond? So if it's, I text him, he responds within three minutes, and this is a consistent thing. Yeah, he uses his phone. Let's just be honest. He uses his phone. He knows how to use it. He's going to talk to you. Sure. On the other end of it, if you're sending him a text and it's taking him an hour to respond to every single one of those, either one of two things. He's not interested in the conversation or he's actually busy, which is more likely on the, the second one. He's actually busy and he's not good at responding. <laughs> Yeah. That's just not his thing. So context clues can help, and you can discern a little bit there, but it is helpful for the guys to communicate that. Yes, they they do help. I, I know from from a lot of years of being a girl, though, you say you know most of the time it's the second one that he's just slow at responding or he's busy. Most of the time as the girl, we assume it's the first one. Oh, he's probably not that into me. He's probably not – he probably doesn't, you know, actually like me all that much. Um, I'm not going to text him as much because I don't want to annoy him. And so then we get into this circle. Of, he's like, well, man, she doesn't hardly text me anymore. She's probably not interested. And round and round we mm -hmm. go. But does it make it right? No, yeah. not necessarily. I'm just saying it's helpful information to know. Hey, sorry, it takes me forever to respond. I'm just not good at texting. I'm like, okay, great. But Otherwise, I, I'm going to assume I'm annoying you. I will say this is going to, it could be groundbreaking. <laughs> could uh, make some people mad. Can we just slow down on overthinking things? Like I, no, I'm the world's worst I, I about don't it. know that we can. I'm, I'm the world's worst about it. I do overthink things. I overanalyze things. That's a sin issue. And I call it a sin issue for me uh, because it makes me anxious about certain things, specifically around ministry and the way my life's going. So, yeah, that's a problem. Um, and it, I think it connects to the pressures that we put on dating, specifically in the church. So I get it. But when you become over-anxious and over-analytical— you're, you're taking the Lord out of the equation as if you have to be the one that figures every single little thing out. There's a faith aspect to dating. Sure. Because obviously we're dating with a purpose. That's the, the idea behind it. But you don't know who this person is. You don't know how they interact. You're trying to figure that out at the beginning. And if you start to overanalyze, you are going to set the precedent for the rest of your life. Even if it's you end up with this person, you get married, overanalyzing every little detail. Yeah. So I would say there is some work to be done with the heart if 
every little thing that the other person does causes you to go into a panic. Oh, yes. It should not be panic-inducing. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I think, yeah, I think if you're in a situation where you're overanalyzing every single detail and that is your MO for the length of a relationship, yeah. that's problematic. I think the threshold for overanalyzing is probably a little higher when you're just starting to get to know someone and you're learning those things about them. But if, for instance, a guy says, hey, I'm not great at texting. Okay, great. There's your answer. Quit worrying about it. Yeah. Um, you can't, if you're then still going, oh my word, I know he said that, but what if he's just trying to figure out a way to tell me he doesn't really like me? Like, take it at face value. Yeah. Believe what they tell you. But yeah, I think that a good communication relationship alleviates a lot of that if you're still if you're overthinking their answers to the questions that you were overthinking before then you've yeah you're in this spiral that is it is problematic because you're not trusting the lord you're not assuming the best of your brother or sister mm-hmm. which is what they are first and foremost um so yeah both sides communicate well and then yeah you've got, well, you I'll, do have to assume the best of the other person i'll say i don't i've been on the dating apps I, I don't like talking on them for very long. Mm-mm. So if I can tell there's a connection here of, okay, we can keep a conversation going, I'm, I'm going to say something to the effect of, hey, I'm not great at checking these things and responding on these things because I've got a busy schedule. If you're comfortable with it, here's my phone number. Feel free to, to text or call me Yeah. Um, at, at any point, and I'm happy to talk if I'm free. But I just say that out openly because yeah. I know that I'm. there could be a day or two where I don't respond to anything on an app because yeah. it doesn't really pop up. It doesn't go on my radar. I'm busy. I've got something going on. So if I just say that out at the front end. So, I mean, I agree with that. I do just want to call out male and female. Yes. Stop overanalyzing things in terms of causing yourself to be anxious and not trusting the work. Yes, I completely agree. Tiny soapbox. No, that's so good. Um, okay. So now let's move on to our next question. We've covered if a guy's interested, if a girl's interested, what do you do? So now next question, should girls ask guys out? Man, you made that dramatic. He got all, we were looking at this ahead of time. Dalton was like, should they like, I don't know. I was like, okay, let's not get super over analytical of the words of this question. I was like, I have paraphrased tons of questions to this end into one question. So let's not go off on the exact words that are words here. matter they do but this is a paraphrase so go with me here um and i kind of have two two prongs to this question one should they from the standpoint of is it right is it allowable is it oh even okay and then second from the standpoint of from a guy's perspective how is that received uh on in terms of is it wrong for them yeah. to do it no and that that might frustrate some people. Um, no, no, it's not wrong for a girl to ask a guy out. Uh, it very much depends on how you do it, but I, I don't think it's necessarily sinful, inherently wrong for that to happen. Um, so I'll, I'll put that out there. And those that would say guys are to be leading, you're absolutely right. Sometimes guys are clueless and they're not picking up on something, and they would be fine with the situation. <laughs> They just needed a push in the right direction. So if if a guy you're interested in is showing some signs, but he's also kind of a clueless person, <laughs> okay, say something. Yeah. Uh, on the back end of that, though, because the reason why I was so big into the minutia of this is not just is it okay for girls to ask guys out. Should they? You should be looking for, and I've said this before, you are not looking for immediately a man that is going to lead you. He doesn't fit the spiritual categories that the Bible lines out of uh, in in this order. He is not your husband. He is not your father. He is not your pastor. Those would be the three leaders that you have in your life that you would submit to, authoritatively speaking. Um, With the caveat, the pastor is obviously different than the father and the husband. Um. So you want him to lead, but he's not those things yet, so you're not submitting to his authority, but he needs to be showing signs of leadership. And if you're interested in a guy that is very passive and never asks people out, expects the girl to lead, 
that should be an indication that, okay, maybe he's not ready to date or at least date me. It's okay to not be interested in the guy anymore if he is a passive person and he is not taking charge of his own life. So yep. I, I think it's okay in specific instances if a guy is just clueless or if he's not really sure about what's going on and just needs some clarification from you for you girls to go for it. On the same time, that's why I, I like words so much. <laughs> should they? No, they, they really shouldn't. Guys should be stepping out and taking that responsibility, taking that big step. Uh, that's at least my thoughts on it. Yeah, and push back. No, no, no. Um, I think it's more of in, instead of asking the question of okay, right versus wrong, mm -hmm. we've established it's not wrong. But then if you ask the question of allowable or best or you know r good versus better, then I think it's a no. Yes. Yeah. I think I'd go with that. Um, it, it's not ideal. No. I guess is the is the point. Is it okay? Sure. Have I done it? Yes. Is it my favorite? No. <laughs> oh, no. And it shouldn't be. <laughs> yeah. So then to the second part of the question, how is that? And I know this is a very, it, it varies answer. How is that received from a guy's perspective? It depends on how you do it. Okay. So if, if your approach is... And I think there can be some arrogance in this of, and guys can do it too, of approaching someone, showing that they're interested, saying that they're interested, but also making it very clear that they're frustrated that you haven't done something about it. Mm. That's not going to be received well. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I, I'm interested in you. I thought you were interested. You never but did you, anything. You haven't, you haven't asked me out, so I, I just want to go for it. That's not going to be received as well as a, a level of humility and saying, I'm not really sure, but I am interested and I would love to, to get to know you more. Would you like to go out for coffee sometime yeah. or would you like to go to a park or whatever? I would actually receive that well because maybe this is something that I haven't thought about or, or has been on my radar, but I've had some other things going on that have kind of distracted me for the moment and I'm going to be, oh, okay, yeah. If I'm not interested, I'll say I'm not interested. Yeah. I'm For me, I'm an honest person. I'll tell you, thank you. We I really appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate it, but I'm just, I'm not interested in you in that particular way. Uh, but it was very kind of you to ask me out. And, and I want to recognize that that was hard yeah. and uncomfortable. So I really do appreciate it. Something to that effect. Yeah. Um, so it, it all depends on the attitude and the posture and how you approach it. If you do so in a way that you're calling out the guy for not doing anything, not really going to be received well. Yeah. Putting someone, guy or girl. <laughs> On the defensive, in the process of asking them out, it's probably not a good approach. No, no, it's not. <laughs> um, so I, I do think, yeah, it's okay. Um, should it be the way that it is? No. Um, and, and I think it can be received well if done appropriately. Does that answer the full gambit of it the does. question? Okay. It does. And I, I want to just kind of, this isn't really a question. I just want to throw something out there. See how it lands, and I don't know. We can discuss. If we don't, I'll just cut it all out. Um, so it kind of plays into you were talking before, or we were talking off the air about a tendency a lot of times among guys today to prolong adolescence. They don't grow up as fast, especially spiritually. They're not as applied in their younger years. And so there's an element in the church, I think, a lot of times of – Girls get frustrated because guys aren't asking anyone out. However, the guys like to just hang out with the girls all of the time and basically have the benefits of having a girlfriend because there's a girl around all the time and hang out and whatever, but not ever actually having to step up and do something about it, like commit or mm -hmm. state, not even commit. That's I'm not talking about that right off the bat, but like state intentions. But they get the benefits of having – a girl hang out with them all the time and they can go do stuff and it's fun and it's whatever. And so there's a frustration from the girl side of, okay, well I'm just going to ask him out so we can put some labels on this. Yeah. I don't really have a question in that other than I see it a lot. What are your thoughts on all of that? Well, I am going to answer it a little bit later on in this episode. Oh, okay. Um, because I think there's a 
another question that really ties into that in terms of age difference and my thoughts on why age difference has been such a big question. Uh-huh. Um, so I'm going to get on that soapbox okay. in a minute. So cool. hold that Teaser. thought. <laughs> We're going to come to that in okay. just a second. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so then the next question on our list here is, how do I let a guy down gently? And if I remember correctly, we talked about this in an episode a couple weeks ago about being honest mm-hmm. in like turning a date down or or you've gone out a few times and you're letting a guy down gently. Honesty is key. And I think it, we talked about in the episode of like, okay, we, <laughs> we can – stretch the truth. We can even be a little deceptive a lot of times in the name of, Oh, I just want to let him down gently. I want to be kind. I don't want it to be rude. So with all of that being the, the backstory, I guess you could say of, okay, yes, being honest is key. How is the best way? How is it best received by a guy to be let down gently, but still honest in person? Okay. Always for, for me as best as possible. Okay. So, I mean, if it's a distance thing, that's just not feasible. Yeah. But don't do it over text message. Okay. Phone call is sufficient in that situation, but if possible, I would prefer it in person. Okay. Um, I, but do it in a way where, like, you go out on a date. Don't, don't do it at the beginning of the date because then you're like, well, what do we do now? I'll just take you back home. Yeah. I have seen some... Uh, sometimes before going to Bible college, you see some entertaining stuff. Yeah. And there was a, a guy that was going to uh, ask a friend of ours out. So we all, there was a specific spot you could sit and look out a window and you could oh, overlook no. everything, but they had no idea we were watching them. <laughs> so they start walking out of the building and we, there is uh, in the middle of our campus, there's just a big square. Okay. Where all the buildings make a square and there's a lawn in the middle of it. And we always knew that a guy was asking a girl out if it was just the two of them walking around the square. <laughs> and you could tell how it went depending on how far they made it. So if they made it all the way around the square, he's got a date. Yeah. If they don't make it very far, it's not looking very good for you. This guy made it down the sidewalk, didn't even make it to the square. Oh, buddy. Before they turned back around and that was the end of the conversation. Absolutely hilarious. <laughs> Um, she let him oh. down, I thought gently. Yeah. Because she didn't want to walk all the way around the stinking square. Yeah. Um, so See, that's what you, just be careful to... of where you do it. Yeah, because you said don't do it at the beginning of a date because then you're stuck. But I'm like, I feel like if I was a guy and this girl, I paid for dinner, we did whatever. And then at the end, she's like, hey, I'm not really into this anymore. I'd be like, you couldn't have told me before I yeah. spent all this well, money? Give it some breathing room first then. okay if that's a situation and the guy is uh, he's treated you to something nice yeah. like taking you out to a game or uh, out to dinner or you, you can tell he's put some effort and, and some cash money into it uh give it some breathing room. okay wait a little while because typically guys are are not bold enough at the end of the date to immediately say hey let's let's go out again does this day work for you okay they're either going to give it a day or so because that's kind of the cultural norm or they'll make some sort of comment and you can be very gentle in the way you approach it. Um, but I do prefer it in person if possible. Over the phone is okay. Text message for me, never okay. Okay. Ever. That is incredibly impersonal and you can't read. You read a lot into text messages. So you can't tell the tone in which things are being said. I, I am no good. Now there is a caveat. I, you might be going I was this say, way. I have a caveat, but you give yours first. Well, a dating app. Yes, that plays into mine. Um, what do you do there? I, if you don't know the person and they just shoot their sh- shot on a dating app, then, okay, no big can deal. You, call you can me? respond. <laughs> yeah, you can respond through whatever the app is or text yeah. or whatever that is. But that's, it's not impersonal because you don't have a personal relationship with them. Yeah. yeah. That's the important part here. I'm assuming we're talking about someone that you know that has asked you out, um, is a believer because yeah. everything we're talking about here is. Christian. Among believers, yeah. Um, so be kind, be personal in in actually being willing to have a conversation with them, yeah, and not just shooting them down over text because that will not be received well. No, and that that's yeah, right in line with the caveat I had of com- coming more from a dating app or someone you don't know perspective of the letting someone down doesn't have to exceed the level to which you were already engaging with them. Mm-hmm. For instance, if it's a dating app and then you start texting, don't call the person say, no. Hey, I don't, or if you've 
been texting, you've talked on the phone a few times, but you haven't gone out and you're not interested, you don't have to set up a time in person to tell them no. you don't want to see. Like, it doesn't have to exceed wherever you've been, yeah. I think. Yeah, I think that's a good distinction, an important distinction. Um, I would also say words matter. Mm-hmm. So the way in which you word things, I, you hinted at it a few minutes ago of if you're not interested, don't leave things open. Yeah. So don't give the the typical line of, well, I'm just not ready to date right now or uh, the one that, that I really hate the most. And I'm, if you said this, I'm sorry, but I am not going to like you is I'm just dating Jesus right now. I hate that. I will, I will not be a pleasant person if you say no. that to me. I mean, what a... <sighs> I mean, that cheapens our... I mean, it's so demeaning, and yeah, I Uh, have no room for it. Don't don't say that. Just don't do it. And if you have done it, (laughs) repent of it, because it's just awful. Yeah. Um, Any open-ended thing like that, or I'm just not ready right now, Mm -mm. if you're not interested, you're not interested. Bottom line, don't leave it open to where... And this is guys and girls. Don't leave it open to where the other person is looking going, well as they would do in Dumb and Dumber. So you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> yeah, or like the, the um, I think it was the Backstage Pass we did a few weeks ago, or a couple weeks ago, of um, guy asked a girl out. She's not interested because she was interested in someone, mm-hmm. someone else. And now he's wanting to go back to it. The not right now, the for now, like, I'm just not in a good place right now. Whatever, those, the right now phrases, yeah, they're saying, oh, so if I wait a few months, I can try this again. When really what you're saying is, no, I don't want to go out with you ever yeah again you're not really being totally honest but it sounds gen- gentler there needs to be christian courtesy yeah that i, I was, i'm gonna say this until i'm blue in the face you're talking about a brother and sister in christ there so the way that you interact with them should be different the way that you interact with other people mm-hmm. there needs to be courtesy there needs to be grace and an extension of love in that moment um so practically speaking don't do something that's going to do harm to them personally, spiritually, emotionally, whatever the case may be. Sometimes it can happen unintentionally. And, yeah. and look, I get it. That, that's going to happen. But do everything you can to protect and honor them as best as you know how. Yeah. That would be my personal opinion. How much on Okay, so a lot of times, or not a lot. I've had it happen multiple times. I know other girls have too. Of you tell a guy, "Hey, I just don't see this going anywhere. I'm not interested from a romantic perspective. Like, I'm ending this." They're like, "Okay, well, what could I have done differently? What can I do better next time? What was the problem? How much honesty are guys really looking for in those questions?" Some guys are looking for a lot of honesty. Okay, Um, and I think it's for pride. Just to be honest about it, honesty and honest. Uh, <laughs> they are being proud of saying, well, she saw something wrong with me. I don't know if she's right about that, but let me check that so I can just be better. Okay. Um, sometimes they're asking it and are genuinely curious to see how they can be growing. I really don't think, even if they're asking that question, you really owe them much there. I, 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 I do still say, like, if they ask that question, Give them something simple of it's, I wasn't interested because I just don't see the compatibility there. You can say that. Yeah. If they're ugly, don't say that to them. Like, I'm just not attracted to you. (laughs) Do not say that. That will not be received well. It will cause harm. It's just not kind whatsoever. So don't go there. Honesty tempered with kindness is key, I Uh, think. (laughs) Be be very wise in the way in which you word things. But if, if they're asking the question, what could I do differently? They, that's an open-ended question too because then they're saying well if i change this mm-hmm. and they said i need to change mm-hmm. this i can reapproach it mm-hmm. so don't answer that question yeah unless i don't, we're gonna unless ourselves to yeah. death here unless that is the case in which p- case be clear um mm-hmm. if it literally is this issue is a big issue but if it were fixed i'd love to go out with you like tell them that yeah um yeah. You guys, I mean, we can, unless this or unless that, until we're blue in the face, And there's plenty of examples of of reasons why you wouldn't be interested, and we're not going to get into that. But um, be be honest about it, but you really don't have to divulge a lot of information. You don't really owe them much there. If they ask, say something, don't leave it open-ended if it's not open-ended. Yeah, because we're just talking about 
letting a guy down who either asked you out the first time or you've gone out with a few times, we're not talking about breakups. Yeah. That's a totally different conversation for a totally different day. Okay, next question. I'm going to ask this and then I got to find my computer charger because it's dying. So can guys and girls just be friends or do guys just hang out with a girl if they like her? Oh, man, that's a hard question because okay. um, I would have answered it differently a couple of years ago. Um, Interesting. I, I've been on the fence about this one just in how guys and girls interact. I used to say, no, absolutely not, because uh, you're going to lead a guy on and in the same breath be like, oh, wait, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> um, I am of the opinion, yes, guys and girls can be just friends. I, I think that that is okay. But there's so many caveats and conditions on that. <laughs> like, what is the nature of the friendship? Is there an intimacy between the guy and the girl that's not the same as other friendships? Yeah. Do, does, uh, from the girl's perspective, do you tell this guy everything about your life that you wouldn't even tell some of your girlfriends? That's not healthy, good, no. or okay because... What you don't realize is you are cultivating intimacy with this person. They might be developing feelings through this. Mm -hmm. And this isn't a Hallmark movie. No, unfortunately. That's <laughs> not typically going to end well. It's not going to be safe or healthy. No. Well, and it's not taking into account anyone that either of you may date in the future. Like, that's... it's selfish in mm -hmm. its um short-sightedness in that i mean my rule of thumb and this has <laughs> this has developed over time uh, kind of like you said I've, I, I've learned from not doing this well but i think when it comes to a level of being just friends with a guy if you're friends with a guy or guys you're friends with a girl and one of you starts dating someone and your friendship has to drastically change because now that one of you's in a relationship it's not appropriate mm, yeah then it's not appropriate whether you're dating someone or not. Right. Is that fair? Yeah, I think okay. that's a great distinction. Um, and like I said, I have learned from not doing this well. Like that's kind of something that I've had to, to figure out. Um, I think what is important here is to determine what does a friend get to know about me? Mm -hmm. Because I have different types of friends that get to know different pieces of my life. Yeah. Uh, my closest friends, like the guys that I live with, and then uh, my old college roommate, and then a buddy of mine that I don't live with, but uh, we go to church together, very close friends, they get to know pretty much everything about me. Mm -hmm. If I had a, a friend that was a girl, she's not going to get to know everything about me. No. Because, again, I go into intimacy. You're cultivating intimacy that shouldn't yeah. be there. But, I mean, there's also things that she just doesn't need to know about me. That's not part of the relationship at all. Um, but there's also guy friends that I have that we have a good friendship, but we're not at that level. Yeah. They don't get to know everything about me because we haven't been friends that long. We're really not as close or I, I can't have everyone be my closest friend. Yeah. Not everyone can be my best friend. Uh -uh. Well, I yeah, have it's my, not meant to be that way. I have my core group of people that know every single detail about my life and I know have my back regardless and then I have those friends that kind of span out from there that, yeah, I almost spilled my water there, <laughs> uh, that span out from there. That they, they know a lot about me, but they don't know everything. And I think the same is true in this situation. There has to be a level of guy is friend with girl. She gets to know this, 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 and this about me. This is my personal life, my private yeah. life. And, yeah, I know it, you're going to talk about it in a second because we – teased a minute ago this is this is what gets into that area of like it gets really easy to be like oh well this girl's always around and you kind of know that she likes you or mm -hmm. vice versa girls if you know a guy likes you and so you just kind of it's nice to have someone around but you know you're not really into it and for lack of a better term you kind of just string them along a little yeah um that's not kind or loving to anyone mm -hmm. um okay so then from a from a practical or from a logistics standpoint. So we've said, okay, yes, guys and girls can be just friends. Do you, ha like, as a general rule, if guys are wanting to just hang out with his girl and they're, oh, they we're just friends, do you really do that all that much if you're not interested in her? Um, I don't mean in big group settings. I mean, okay, so obviously, like, oh, hey, like, small small groups or even just one on one are you going to do that if as i don't mean you specifically necessarily but in general 
if a guy is doing that, is there? There's got to be something there. Okay. And, and that's just my thought process yeah. on it. There's got to be something there because he is giving up his time to spend intentional time with you. Yeah. So in my opinion, there has to be a level of interest there. Even if it's not a great level, there's okay. got to be something there. I just don't think that that's wise. Oh, no, I'm not talking. Yeah, and I don't, I wasn't asking from a, I don't either. Yeah. But well, just but purely I, from a logistics standpoint. I do want to make yeah. that known. I yes, do not but, think yeah. that is wise. Um, because, again, you're, you're I, I've said this like four or five times now, you're cultivating intimacy. Mm-hmm. That's not healthy. Um, and you're going to do harm to yourself through wherever this intimacy takes you or future relationships or even if that somehow butted into a relationship, there's mm-hmm. still going to be some problems there. It's just not a smart thing to do. If a guy is doing that, you should probably be wondering, is there some interest there? And if you're not interested, don't don't go with it. Yeah. Well, and I think it if it's happening, you're like, okay, he he must be interested. And you are too. I think it's okay to to say something. Hey, we we've been hanging out a lot. Like what is this? Where are you going? Like, I just want to make sure I'm, I have the same expectations that you do. Where are you seeing this going? Not only is it okay, you should do that. Okay. Here's an instance where you should. (laughs) Yeah. You, you really should do something at that point because there's so many other dangers that you're playing into. If you don't just Uh clearly communicate and know where everyone is standing. Me personally, I don't hang out with females one-on-one. Yeah. Like even in the dating sphere, I'm very careful about it. Um, I have a rule at my house, and I've had a rule with my roommates since I've had roommates uh-huh. of you are not allowed to be alone in our residence with yeah. a member of the opposite sex. That's one of my... Unless it's your mother. <laughs> yeah. Or a family member. Also. Yeah, but obviously. You just don't, don't do yeah, it. Yeah, I have Don't the same play role. with fire. Yep. Um it's it's not worth it it's not safe it's not wise and it doesn't look good just in terms from outside looking in I, yeah so i i won't do it yeah i just refuse to make that a thing um the only time that i spend one on one time alone with a female i'm on a date yeah for me that's it okay okay so i just realized we are only halfway through our list and we're like 45 minutes into this yikes um which has been a really, really good conversation. I'm not like taking anything away from that. However, I don't think we want this to be a close to two hour episode by the time we're done with it. So why don't we cap this here? Um, We will work in, we'll do a bonus episode at some point. Um, That is part two. The other half of this list was, we still have some good questions to talk about. We're gonna talk about age differences. How important is denomination when it comes to dating? We're going to talk about ghosting. We're going to talk about meeting the families and the one. So we still have all that to come. And I don't want to feel like we have to rush through any of it because we're taking forever. So let's end it here. We will sign off. We will come back with part two at some point later in the season. Is that good with you? Sounds good to me. Okay. Guys, thanks for being here. We have enjoyed it. We will be back, oh man, either Friday or with the couch cast or next week with a full episode. I don't know what we'll what be week back. we're on, but we will be back. So we will talk to you guys then. Until then, I am Bethany. I'm Dalton. And this is Looking for the Middle. Bye.